longtime colleague and friend, Damien Kaspauer, has built this handy little guitar expression pedal uh, essentially out of his garage, and now it's commercially available. I will uh, link this website uh, below so you can check out his work. I've been wanting to make this video for some time, and it's about the traits that separate the so-called S-tier from the rest. Uh, it's about the makers from the fakers or the doers from the wishful thinkers. Your workshop yeah? is, oh, is freaking you get, you get insane. You to see some of, the, some of the craziness back there. So like your, your space itself, is this like your workshop, your separate area? Yeah. It's just a garage, uh, and by that I mean, yeah, it's a space sectioned off from the house. I got my workbench here to do uh, electronics work, kind of uh, elaborate playback system for my guitar, uh, a mono pedal board, a stereo pedal board. I've got the quad effects processor. I got four speakers bouncing delays between different patterns. <laughs> uh, I'm in deep on this effects pedals and DSP thing. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad to have a space to be able to unfold it a little bit. Innovators tend to be quite discontent with the status quo, always asking questions. Why does this thing have to be this way? Or why can't it do this or that? Now, this is important because most of us kind of tend to stop right there, right? We might post online uh, frustrations and complaints, but it sort of fizzles out. Uh, maybe we'll just return the thing or just sell it. But Damien and people like him, well, he doesn't just stop there. He'll take the pedal apart. Uh, he'll grab a soldering iron and start tweaking things. Uh, he'll pick up an Arduino dev kit, perhaps, and teach himself how to code. Creative discontentment, uh, as I see it, in its best version, is never void of action. Uh, it's never just a theory or a Reddit post. There's action, it's hands-on, and there's taking of things apart and breaking stuff. So there, there's a point now where you love guitar pedals, and at some point you are going, well, I'm going to make one myself. Like that is a, and not only did you say you're going to do that, because a lot of folks say, that they're gonna try to make something. But to go yeah. ahead and actually do it, that's that's really impressive. Uh, I certainly respect folks who are doers, not just you know sayers. Tell me about that. Like, how did you make that connection? That's a huge leap. Yeah, but it's a small step uh, uh, at a time, right? Hmm. It was okay. taking a an old American metal pedal, rehousing it, in an enclosure and hey i don't really like the position of these knobs so why don't i switch them out uh and instead of them being uh pcb mount i'll uh i'll run wires to some potentiometers so i can put them where i want the filter now sweeps wider or there's an aggression that this pedal didn't have before and so that kind of uh discovery that process of building and changing and uh and growing what was possible with an effect really kind of tipped me off that uh i didn't have to be so precious about what was expected there and and from there i think just building slowly forward uh you know one of the next things that i did was take an old crybaby pedal uh ripped out the crying part left in the baby uh, again with the naming <laughs> right? yep yep uh, 
but essentially turned it into an expression controller that I wired up to a uh, a trim pot that I found inside of a rack mount delay that I loved. And that trim pot controlled the clock speed for the delay. Uh, and man, when you crank that way down, it gets long and gnarly and crunchy. So these creative discontents, and I mean that in the most sincere way possible, the drive to make and tweak stuff just doesn't stop after one or two weekends. It's not a fad or a trend, it's kind of relentless. They separate themselves through grit and persistence. Uh, they continue to work at it little by little, bit by bit, uh, one iteration at a time over a lengthy period of time. This is a conscious choice, uh, maybe even painful, sacrificial, to choose to work and move the needle. What was building the prototype like? How was that process? Again, it's those small steps, right? We throw it back to a foot controlled expression controller, right? Uh, that experiment with the rack mount delay and the clock speed. And from there it was, okay, well, I, I can do that. Uh, let, me, let me just start with that and build a, uh, expression controller with a knob on it. You know, one of the steps towards uh, the current product line, uh, the no-brainer. It's simply an expression controller. <laughs> what a great a knob, name. Right? Yeah. And from there it was, oh, you know what though? Uh, the same problem that I had with foot controllers for expression. I've only got two legs to control those. And ultimately, I don't have any hands when I'm playing guitar to turn this expression knob. How can I turn this knob using something other than my hand? So, okay, light-based resistance, uh, looking into photoresistors. Okay, I can probably use light to control the expression value instead of this knob and potentiometer. So, okay, let me figure out how that can work in the context of this. Uh, and from there, it's like, okay, cool. Now I can wave my foot, wave my hand. I can, uh, you know, set it in front of the television uh, and it can dynamically change expression without me having to interact with it. Ah. Oh, that was cool. Great. Uh, <laughs> but you know what would be really cool is if I could just flash patterns of light at that photoresistor. Uh, and if I had control over those patterns of light with a few different knobs. Okay. Now I can decide what the waveform is going to be. I can change between them maybe. Uh, I better learn some programming. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to jump into this Arduino thing that folks are hot for and figure that out. And this is really what I have been driving towards in my practice is bringing some of that surprise and delight to uh, to my playing. And and again, these have unlocked some sounds that ultimately. Don't come out of the box. It's true that you should do something only if it brings you joy, but this creative grit isn't instant joy or gratification. Most of the time, it's actually delayed, delayed joy or delayed gratification. Projects like making new products isn't pure joy 24 seven. 
Uh, it's quite often fraught with setbacks and frustrations, no doubt. Uh, no one would be wiser if you just gave up. What were some of the things that was like a really difficult thing for you to overcome? Because there, this is this wasn't some rosy cakewalk, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I could talk about simple things like being able to drill straight holes. Uh, you know. <laughs> but you weren't able to drill. Sir. Yeah, me too. I can't. You know, <laughs> oh, power man. tools. Oh yeah, get that away it's, from me. Yeah. It's fine for myself, but past a certain point, uh, it's not worth much. So, you know, overcoming that by inviting collaborators into the process, you know, finding mm. people who that's their skill and uh, and they do it really well. Other things like uh, electronics, uh, PCB design. When I decided to make the leap from passive resistance uh, of expression to control voltage, uh, outputting a control voltage uh, as a source. Uh, this was hard work for me because there's a fundamental electronics understanding when you're juggling voltage and trying to get it aligned for a unipolar or bipolar workflow. And again, like I, I, I want to have both. So getting over that hurdle of understanding what I would consider basic electronics, but but really taking it further than just the passive resistance and going into active delivery of control voltage, um, that was that was hard. There's there's moments where uh, where you want to give up, <laughs> where you're ready to, uh, you know, accept mm. defeat and move on to something more fun. And and this is actually part of the process, right? Uh, sometimes yeah, yeah. we need to set these things aside before we can move on. But I work with a, a woman out of Portland, uh, goes by Knobhead PDX. And when we first started talking, she was like, oh, cool. Well, I'm going to design you a custom knob with its own little neural pattern. And uh, and we can just figure out how that works and came up with a great uh, swirling pattern design that, uh, you know, she just continues to deliver this artisanal uh, knob like who knew, uh, but it's like the cherry on top of every device that I build when I finally get to slide the knob on, lock it into place, it just completes the whole picture. Perhaps this is the most important point of all. Uh, for this breed of creative makers, uh, they are fearless when it comes to putting their work out there uh, for the world to see and hear. They risk failure, maybe even mockery or embarrassment. But without taking chances, uh, you can't grow. You can't get to succeed either. So at some point, you have to stop tweaking in your garage or your basement, and you have to put it out there uh, without fear or worry or be too self-conscious. 